Today, we're talking about oil sampling and if it's right for you. Stay tuned to the end to find out. Time for Mr. Truck, reviewing the latest innovations for your truck and trailer. So, what's an oil sample? You might be asking yourself that. Well, self, I'm here to help you out. Taking an oil sample means you take a very small amount of oil that resides in your oil pan and happens to run its way all through that engine, keeping everything lubricated and clean. Uh, you take that sample, you put it off in a little bottle, you send it off to a lab. That lab then takes it, they run it through some scientific tests, they analyze it, and about a week or so they get back to you and they let you know what's in there. Not only do they let you know what's in there, they help you understand what's, what all those numbers mean. And thankfully, with the lab that I use, if that's just not enough, you give them a holler, they'll get somebody on the phone, and they'll help you really understand what everything means. And, and if you're kind of fretting about what you're seeing, don't worry, they'll help you, help you figure it out too. I've, I've had to call them a couple times on a couple samples. If you have a short bed truck, you know it's not easy to hook up to a gooseneck. Pop-Up came out with these extensions from 9 inches to 16 inches to keep you from breaking out your back window when you're pulling a gooseneck trailer. And everybody uses a short bed. That's the most proper truck there is, is a crew cab short bed. So, protect that window. So how do I take an oil sample? Well, what you gotta do, on, on if you don't have a whole kit to go ahead and make this really super simple for you, you may have to take a vampire tube and like an old straw, you take your finger, bring it on up, and you throw it into that little sample bottle. So you're taking it straight from the oil pan itself where everything has been sitting for a while. Now be sure to run the engine, get everything all nice and circulated so you get a really good idea of what's running through your engine. Yeah, it's going to be hot, but it's kind of the nature of the beast. Other places have a little vacuum tube. You can pull, pull the sample out and screw it into a bottle. I thought I saw something like that on TFL when they were doing their, uh, their old sample series on, uh, on their Ram Rebel Rouser. On mine, I've got the nice little benefit of hopping down to this little tube right here. And I'm, it's actually really good and simple. And I'll show you just right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and actually take the sample itself. And it's easy enough, my six year old can do it. What do you think, kid? You wanna go ahead and do this? Mm -hmm. Cap off, kiddo. And then there's a cap right here. And you unscrew that. So go ahead, you turn this way. Mm -hmm. We'll just unscrew it the rest of the way. To let that dangle. Now we could try to push, but guess what? This whole shindig runs off of oil pressure. So what you need to do is you need to crank the engine. It's gonna get real loud real quick. You're going to hit the Horizon app because that's who our reports are through. I'm going to go through, hit submissions for a brand new one. Now you can scan the barcode that goes with everything. When you do that, it takes the barcode, then hit continue. Now, once you've entered in all of your information, your component time, your fluid, any notes for additional testing or notes to the analyst, we'll hit submit. 
and it will show up as waiting for sample. So then, take your sample, you apply it to here, just like so. Once you do that, we'll put this, the sample, into the bag. And we'll lock it all on up. It is good to go. So I'm going to go ahead, get this off in an envelope. And then uh, we're going to ship it off. And within a week, we'll have our analysis back. All right, drop her on in. Good job, kiddo. All right, folks, now we got our report back. We'll hop on the Horizon app. Now, as you see, we've got our sample back. It's really nice. Now, in this report, you can see we're at a severity level of 2, which is the very beginning of an abnormal sample. And in the comments, it'll show you what they have to say. Now, you'll see this exact same message in the actual... Uh, report itself so we'll go ahead and we'll click on the view report it'll ask you what to open it with and we'll put this sideways so we can see this a lot nicer wait for this thing to focus come on Ford focus Ford focus now now that we got our sample back you can see that uh, Tan and iron have been uh, flagged at a moderate level, which you can see in orange versus green. See, first signs that things are uh, getting a little bit dirty in the oil, but not so much that uh, anything really needs to happen quite yet. Everything here, PPM, is parts per million. The uh, BL at the top stands for baseline. Now, that is actually this oil. Um, <clears throat> that is this oil when it is fresh out of the container and you can actually compare everything to it now that applies to sample number 16 and 17 as sample number 15 was a different oil but as after a freshly rebuilt engine you'll notice that uh, the lube time and the unit time had changed drastically after I had a uh, I had a failure and it was not oil related failure it was a part failure as you see the lube time and the unit time changed drastically I went from a 300,000 mile down to a 30,000 mile and that was the time frame since the uh, the engine got a rebuild I had to uh, do a full full end frame and that hurt the uh, sample after that number 16 was the addition of the power driven diesel oil and I am continuing to use their oil in sample number 17 and we're going to go another 15,000 in sample once again and we're going to keep on doing this the fuel dilution is it's slowly starting to creep up but anything under two is practically none as um, this really truly is a very sensitive test the uh, yeah, soot slowly getting a little bit more dirty as the oil gets more and more miles and as the engine gets broken a bit more and more still it's actually pretty good in there doing doing all right nothing to really it's not flagged yet but I've been keeping an eye on it for a while and that's nowhere near worse it's actually been our base number is uh, decent our viscosity is good everything's good in here so we're going to keep running for another 15,000 miles and resample. And at that time, considering that the engine's still breaking itself in, um, I'm probably going to, I might change it, I might not. Uh, we'll just see what the sample has to say. So now on down to the important part of thing. Is it right for you? Well, it depends. Are you running a commercial type of application? Yes or no? If no, it gets a bit less worth it is your oil capacity around about four gallons or greater if not i'm sorry this is not worth it one sample pack goes for about fifty dollars and a packet of five 
it, it goes for about 180. So you figure, call it $45 a piece, you know, somewhere in that neck of the woods. You can do a, a you can you can do an oil change for a whole lot cheaper than that. If you just want to know, there is no no reason to stop you. Just make sure you have a decent amount of miles on your system when you're taking that. Uh, when you just have a decent amount of miles on that system when you're taking the sample, because you want to have something substantial enough on there to show some dirt. If you don't have a bypass filtration set up on there, by the time you get to, let's say, the normal 4,000, 5,000 miles, let's say if you don't have a, an old bypass filtration set up on there, the uh, standard, actually, no, nowadays they're doing this intelligent oil monitor type stuff. So let's say you're at 8,000 miles and your oil life monitor says, hot diggity dog, it's time for you to change your oil. You can take a sample then. Or, you know, let's say you do that and it's got 100,000 miles on there. You got your, eight, you know, say you, in this example, you got your 8,000 miles on there and you just want to know what's the, what's the oil doing? What's the engine doing? Is everything okay in there? So you take your sample, you send it off, you get it back and you got a $50 bill in it letting you know that, hey, everything's going good to go. Or, hey, we got a problem starting to go on here. If you have an engine that's known for busting a head gasket, sometimes it's worth it because you can you can you can tell let's say you got a bad head gasket uh prone in the vehicle that you bought you see something like uh sodium and potassium you see those two go together and you go up a ton if they're elevated guess what that's a sign of coolant in your oil and you can tell the very small tiny particles in your oil before it turns into a milkshake once it's a milkshake it's too late oh god God bless it. That's ter that's that's terrible. I'm telling you, that's that's bad. That's a bad day. Listen, milkshakes are good, but not in your engine. It don't like it. I've talked to it. It's told me. So let's say you got yourself a one-ton diesel truck, and you're running hot shot, and you got, well, let's say three, three, three and a half gallons. Well, then you put your old bypass filter on there. Let's say every five thousand, you're checking your oil. So every 5,000 in this example, you swap out your filter by the 10,000 mile mark, you take your sample and by the 15,000 you swap out your filters and you have your, you ha let's say by the 15,000 mile mark, you have your sample back and it tells you, okay, everything's clean there, but you're getting close. Change out your oil. You just got a 15,000 miles out of your oil versus five. Yeah, you spent a little bit more on filters and you have a little bit cheaper over the end versus just changing the oil. But you got to track and monitor the health of your engine the entire way. So it's kind of the, you get to know the health of your engine and then you got the cost that's associated with it. Kind of this and that. If you got a business and things are tight, well, all is cheap. Change your oil. But if something's happening in that system, you're not going to be able to tell. It's just going to hit you. I had a uh, exhaust valve on the number three cylinder hang up, slap the piston, and it destroyed the engine. It, it had hurt itself on the inside and destroyed a brand new turbo that I put on for more power. Oil sample is not going to catch that. Oil sample is not going to catch metal fatigue. So it's not a catch all for everything. So if something happens, you can't blame, you, you definitely can't blame the sample. All you can do is monitor and hope that you catch something soon. For example, out of the past couple samples I've looked at, I'm noticing the soot content go up. I'm noticing the fuel dilution go up ever so slightly, not enough to be flagged, but I'm watching it. It's a pattern that I can see. I can see that as the engine breaks in, there are certain metals that are finding their way into the oil, but they're at such a low level that they're not actually causing any harm just yet. 
more than likely at either the next or the one after that, I will be changing out the oil and I will be going for extended drains. Hey, when your oil change in PM, which is preventative maintenance, cost about $300, spending like 50 bucks, say 50 for the sample, and well, let's say spending 100 versus 300, that saving adds up. I have about, let's say 10, 11 gallons, I got about 10 or 11 gallons of oil capacity. So for me, it's well worth it. I take my sample at 15,000, give or take. By 20,000 miles, I usually have my report back and I'm taking action. Call it 3,000 a week, that gives me about a week for the sample to go in and about half a week in order to do something about it. I got a lovely little leeway on that. Works absolutely fantastic. And if you have a semi-tractor, be it a, a Cummins, a Detroit, a Kitty Cat, you got yourself a big truck, I can't see why you wouldn't want to run an old bypass setup. If you got a hot shot, it's probably a little closer, but if I was running a hot shot, I'd want to know how my truck is running. Especially with all the emissions and all that stuff on there, it's putting a whole bunch of stuff into that oil that I don't want it in there for any much longer than it absolutely has to be. And who knows? Maybe by running that old bypass and doing those fil the filters and taking the samples, it'll help me figure out exactly what my engine needs versus the recommended specification as to when you're supposed to take it out. I'd rather that engine tell me what it needs versus the factory because the, the manufacturer may build these engines to the same tolerances every day, day in, day out, but each one of them is like a kid. They're individual, they got their own personality. This one might go for a million miles, no issues ever. This one, uh, the day that ends in Y. Let's have an issue. To wrap this whole thing up with a bow is very simple. Is the cost of a sample more or less than your oil change? If the oil change is more expensive, look into it further. If the oil change is cheaper than the sampling, it's a no-brainer. It's really not worth it unless you just want to have the information. Y'all have yourself a great day, be safe, and we'll catch you on the flip. Bye-bye.